Hello world! In this video, we will install a new M2 SSD drive into a Windows laptop. Here are the parts and tools that we will need to do the installation. A Western Digital Blue. Make sure that it's compatible to your board specification. You can ask the seller for compatibility. Screw set with chip slider or a guitar chip. Number 2. Disassembly. Start with the corner screws, then left to right, top to bottom. Position the screws in the table, mirroring its original position. In my case, since I'm already familiar with my laptop, I leave the screw in the holes. Remove the laptop back cover. Start where the LAN port is, then use the chip slider from one side to another. Lift the bottom cover and then loosen the top. Number 3 Installing the M2 SSD. You can either install the new M2 SSD on slot 0 or 1. In this video, I have installed it on slot 1. It doesn't really affect the performance as both slots have the same specifications, but do check your motherboard specification just in case. But if you are someone like me who prepared things in order, then move the existing M2 drive from slot 0 to slot 1 and install the new drive to slot 0 because slot 0 will become our bootable drive. Before you return the laptop back cover, make sure to clean the internals first. And then again fasten the screws starting with the corners and then from left to right top to bottom. Check that all screws are tightened. Move the laptop in its position and then plug in the video, power cables, and other accessories. Now let's check the new drive by pressing Windows plus X and then this management. We should be able to see the new drive in an allocated status. In my laptop, I have a drive D, that's why the new drive is in drive E. Now let's try to clone the source drive using the newly installed drive using ESAS. Now let's run ESAS and here we can see this zero which is the original drive and this one which is our newly installed drive which is a 512 SSD which we installed in the M2 slot. Now let's Create a new partition and name this partition. Let's leave the other parameters using the default values like the cluster size. And hit OK. What's good about ESAS is that it will not immediately start the operation. It will let you review it in the play icon in the top left corner. Now let's start creating a new partition. Then hit apply. Once the partition is created, we can now start the cloning process. And in the top right corner, there is a clone button. Just hit that button and then select the source drive, which is the drive that contains our operating system. In this case, this is disk zero. And then select the target drive which is our newly installed drive. Now don't mess this process, otherwise it will mess your drive. Now there is a warning that it will permanently wipe out the contents of the target drive. And that is normal. So again, let's review the clone parameters. 
The source drive is the original drive with the operating system, and the target drive is the drive that we have just installed. Now let's start the cloning process. After you hit the apply, it will restart the computer and depending on the size of the drive that you are cloning, it will take around 4, 512. It took less than 30 minutes. So if you have a drive greater than that size, then expect it to run for at least 30 minutes. After the cloning process, make sure to set the newly installed drive as the primary boot option in your BIOS settings.